Standard armaments in Elden Ring can be leveled up to a maximum level of 25. They can also have their skills, known as Ashes of War, freely swapped out to alternative choices. Your currently active Ash of War for both standard and special weapons is quickly performed by pressing the left trigger. This is the Greatsword Colossal weapon customised with the Lion's Claw Ash of War, which is perfect for hard-hitting, up-close-and-personal offensive playstyles. Here we have the exact same weapon but with the Bloodhound Step Ash of War applied, which grants high speed iframe dodging much better suited for defensive playstyles. As you can see, just by solely changing the weapons assigned Ash of War can dramatically change the way you approach combat situations. Bear in mind some Ash of War skills are only compatible with specific weapon types. For example, Lion's Claw will only work with certain swords, axes and hammers, while Bloodhound's Step will work with any melee armament. Changing these weapon arts is easily achieved by first acquiring a key item known as the Whetstone Knife. This knife can be found at the Gatefront Ruins, just west of the Agil Lake North site of Grace, as shown here. Once the whetstone knife has been acquired, all you need to do is visit any site of grace or speak with blacksmith master Hugh at Roundtable Hold, then select the newly available Ashes of War option from the menu. After selecting the weapon you'd like to customise, you'll be presented with all your currently available Ash of War skills, which are compatible with the armament you just selected. To view all of your currently available weapon skills, regardless of compatibility, from the main menu select Inventory, then tab over to the Ashes of War section to the right. New Ash of War skills can be acquired by purchasing from vendors using runes, found in the environment via exploration, rewards for defeating certain enemies and bosses, or by killing the silver and invisible teardrop scarabs, scattered throughout the lands between. For example, the Lion's Claw Ash of War can be acquired by defeating the Lion Guardian located in the courtyard at Fort Gale in Western Kaelid. The Bloodhound Step Ash of War can be acquired by defeating the Knight Cavalry Field Boss in Northeastern Kaelid, patrolling the bridge in front of Lena's Rise during the night. And the Seppuku Blood Ash of War can be found by hitting the invisible Teardrop Scarab located on the freezing lake in the mountaintops of the Giants. At the time of recording, there's over 90 Ash of War skills to acquire in the base game, which will likely increase as new DLC is released. It's worth noting here that all unique special weapons, such as the Sword of Night and Flame, the Ruins Great Sword, and the Blasphemous Blade Great Sword, all possess powerful, non customizable Ash of War skills, unique to that specific weapon. This means if you want to use the fixed Ash of War skill infused to a special weapon, then in most cases you have no other choice but to use that specific weapon. Hence the reason they're classed as unique special weapons. As a result, all special weapons cannot have their skills or affinities changed or customized via the Ash of War menu. It's also worth noting that all special weapons can only be upgraded to a maximum level of 10, due to their superior starting qualities, unlike standard armaments which max out at a much higher level of 25. Max level 10 special weapons or max level 25 standard weapons are not necessarily superior to one another. Your choice will depend entirely on your preferred build and playstyle, rather than the weapon being special or standard. A quick explanation of Elden Ring's stat scaling mechanic for weapon damage would be beneficial here. Let's take a look at a fully upgraded Greatsword plus 25. In its current base form it deals physical attack damage to enemies, known as Attack Power or AP, of 401 plus 411, that's 812 points of total damage. The 401 indicates the base damage of the physical weapon itself, none of our attributes or stats will affect this number. The only way to raise this base damage of a weapon is by upgrading it using smithing stones. Ultimately, this number stays the same no matter who's wielding the weapon. 
The second number, 411, is the bonus damage which scales directly with our five attributes. Strength, Dexterity, Intelligence, Faith and Arcane. The section below the attack power ratings displays the attribute scaling information for the selected weapon. As you can see, this greatsword has a B scaling for strength and a D scaling for dexterity. As we increase these two attributes by levelling up at Sites of Grace, the weapon will do more bonus damage. S scaling is the highest damage multiplier and E scaling is the lowest damage multiplier, giving six possible grades of scaling for all five attributes. For a stat stacking build, you want at least a B scaling, or preferably A or S, once the weapon is fully upgraded. If a weapon has a D or E scaling, it won't benefit a build that raises those stats to a high level. That said, these lower scaling weapons can work fine in hybrid builds that only require assigning points to simply equip and use the weapon. Upgrading your preferred weapons will not only increase the base damage of the weapon, but will also improve the grades of its damage scaling multipliers. For example, the Ruin's Greatsword has a B scaling for strength at level 1, and this changes to the maximum possible S scaling after upgrading the weapon to max level 10, making it perfect for strength focused builds. When changing the Ash of War skill for compatible armaments, you also have the opportunity to infuse a customised affinity. Affinities can alter the default attribute scaling of a weapon, changing the damage multiplier to scale with the attributes where you've invested the most points. Ash of War affinities can also add various elemental buffs or status effects to a weapon's attack, such as fire, cold, magic, poison and bleed. Due to the potential bonus damage that can be gained when infusing affinities, some form of balancing mechanic needs to be in place, and this comes in the form of decreasing the base damage of the weapon, decreasing all other attribute scaling unrelated to the affinity, and decreasing the effectiveness of guarding. Regardless of all of this, if damage dealing potential is your priority, then applying the correct affinity to support the highest attributes of your build will always work in your favour, once you've managed to build up these stats to higher levels. To add affinities to the Ash of War customization menu, key items known as Wet Blades must be first acquired, and there's a total of 5 Wet Blades available in the game, each offering unique affinity types. These are Iron, Glintstone, Red Hot, Sanctified and Black. A quick shout out to the FextraLife.com wiki website, which I'll be pulling all the detailed charts from to use in this guide. Make sure to check out their website, linked in the description. The first of the five wet blades is the Iron Wet Blade, and as you can see on this chart, the Iron Wet Blade unlocks three physical affinities. Heavy, Keen and Quality. These are the only three affinities in the game that allow stacking of additional weapon buffs using spells and greases, due to them being pure physical affinities. The heavy affinity will add strength scaling for strength focused builds, the keen affinity will add dexterity scaling for dex focused builds, and the quality affinity will add and balance both strength and dex scaling for builds that primarily focus on raising both of these attributes to a high level, which is ideal for pure melee builds. To find the Iron Wet Blade, we first need to gain entry to Stormvale Castle, and locate the Rampart Tower Site of Grace. We also need a single Stone Sword Key to remove a Mist Veil blocking access to the Wet Blade. Luckily, you can freely pick up a Hidden Stone Sword Key on the way to the Wet Blade, by following the path shown here. The second wet blade is the Glintstone wet blade, and as you can see on this chart, the Glintstone wet blade unlocks two affinities, magic and cold. The magic affinity adds intelligence scaling, adds magic damage which scales primarily with intelligence, and increases guarded holy and magic damage negation. 
The Cold affinity adds intelligence scaling, adds magic damage which scales primarily with intelligence, adds the Frostbite's build-up status effect, improves strength and dexterity scaling upgrade multipliers, and increases guarded magic damage negation. The Glintstone Wetblade can be found near the Debate Parlor Site of Grace, deep within the Rhea Lucaria Academy Legacy Dungeon. To reach this Site of Grace, you'll first need to locate and defeat the mandatory boss named Red Wolf of Radagon, also within the Academy. To find the Red Wolf and the Glintstone Wetblade from the main Academy Gate Site of Grace, follow the path shown here. Wetblade is the Red Hot Wetblade, and as you can see on this chart, the Red Hot Wetblade unlocks two affinities, Fire and Flame Art. The Fire affinity adds Strength Scaling, adds Fire Damage which scales primarily with Strength, and increases Guarded Lightning Damage Negation. The Flame Art affinity adds Faith Scaling, adds Fire Damage which scales primarily with Faith, and increases Guarded Fire and Lightning Damage Negation. The Red Hot Wetblade can be found at the Red Main Castle Legacy Dungeon, located in South East Kaelid. However, a few steps must be completed before access to the Wetblade is granted. First and foremost, you need to defeat the optional demigod boss Star Scored Radan, found in the Wailing Dunes, located directly north of Red Main Castle. These dunes can only be reached via a wooden lift found within the castle grounds. Once Radan is defeated, return to Witch Hunter Jeren at Redmain Castle, who's now relocated up the stairs to the very north end, not far from where you first meet him. To unlock the door blocking access to the Wetblade, you first need to exhaust all dialogue options with Jeren, then fast travel to the chamber outside the plaza Site of Grace, and follow the path shown here. The fourth Wetblade is the Sanctified Wetblade, and as you can see on this chart, the Sanctified Wetblade unlocks two affinities, Lightning and Sacred. The Lightning affinity adds Dexterity Scaling, adds Lightning Damage which scales primarily with Dexterity, and increases Guarded Lightning and Fire Damage Negation. The Sacred affinity adds Faith Scaling, adds Holy Damage which scales primarily with Faith, and increases Guarded Holy and Magic Damage Negation. The Sanctified Wetblade can be found deep within the Lanedale Royal Capital Legacy Dungeon. However, access to the city will only be granted upon acquiring at least two Great Runes, which are only dropped by Shard Bearer bosses such as Godric, Renala, and Radan. An important thing to note here is the Sanctified Wetblade becomes inaccessible if you defeat the mandatory legend boss, Malaketh the Blackblade, so make sure to pick it up before reaching this point. Maleketh is found at the end of the crumbling Faramazula Legacy Dungeon, located to the far east of the Lands Between. 
Once you've gained entry to the Lanedale capital city, the wet blade can be found near the West Capital Rampart site of Grace. In case you haven't yet located this Grace, from the very first East Capital Rampart site of Grace, follow the path shown here. blade is the black wet blade and as you can see on this chart the black wet blade unlocks three affinities poison blood and occult the poison affinity adds arcane scaling adds poison buildup which scales primarily with arcane and improves strength and dexterity scaling upgrade multipliers the blood affinity adds arcane scaling adds blood loss buildup which scales primarily with arcane and improves strength and dexterity scaling upgrade multipliers. The occult affinity adds arcane scaling and increases buildup of any inherent status effects that already exist on the weapon, such as scarlet rot, poison or bleed. This means that occult will not add any status effects to a weapon but only improve existing ones. The Black Wet Blade can be found deep within the underground region of Nokron, Eternal City. To reach this sprawling city ruin, you must first defeat the optional demigod boss, Starscourge Radan. Immediately after defeating Radan, a falling star will create a huge hole in the ground in Eastern Limgrave, called Starfall Crater. This crater can be found just northwest of the Fort Height West site of Grace. Descending deep down into Starfall Crater will lead you to the Nokron Eternal City site of Grace. From here, continue east through the underground city where you'll soon encounter the Mimic Tier Great Enemy Boss, who must be defeated to unblock the path leading to the Black Wet Blade. If you're having trouble when fighting this boss, as it's a Mimic Tier which spawns as an identical replication of your character, you can unequip your weapons just before traversing the Veil Mist, then re-equip them once the Mimic Tier has spawned with a minimal offence. Once the Mimic Tier boss has been defeated, the Black Wet Blade can be found near the Ancestral Woods site of Grace. In case you haven't yet located this Grace, from the Mimic Tier site of Grace, follow the path shown here. 